welcome back to the Mystery Hours Safe and Sober Fundraiser, where you get to watch me dance for about a minute, and then we get into it. We are in our last hour. Our last hour. This is it. We have an interview with Pam Holt, who's a board member, um, because you may say, okay, great, this is great. We're raising money, this is a good cause. How's this money used? How are we doing this? And uh, Pam's here to answer that question. Um, I want you to know that though this is the last interview, the auction continues until eight o'clock tonight. It's a great auction. Go check it out, follow the link. If you would like to donate, please do so. We would still love that. You can go to the top of our Facebook page or find it in the comments here and you can donate and be a part of making a difference in countless teenagers' lives in nearly 600 schools across 10 states. Wow, it got brighter again. Look at me just brightening up. Check this out. Oh, did I get darker? <laughs> oh, I did. Okay, there we go. Get out of here, son, said no one. And uh, that's where we're at. Um, as always, uh, this is brought to you by Cox Health. Thank you to Cox Health. Appreciate you all so very much. That's the entire community. Also, we want to thank our corporate sponsors. MoDOT, <clears throat> O'Reilly Auto Parts, Larson, excuse me, <clears throat> Larson and Miller Injury Law and Great Southern Bank. Wow, what a difference you guys have made. Um, also, if you're admiring things, this is the new Safe and Sober logo. Looks nice and crisp and clean, done by Mostly Serious. And um, Kurt Larson, founder, would like to add this as we're chatting. Pam Holt is a true professional and nationally known expert in prevention, and we are fortunate to have her on our board. This is going to be good. You are correct, sir. Let me check and see what else I need to make sure I am talking about today, this time. That's from 10 a.m. That's from one. Is this guy a professional? I'm not sure anymore. That's three. <laughs> so we gotta have Pam. It's the last hour. Things are getting a little loopy over here. That's not it. Oh, that's not it. And that's not it. We got Pam Holt, that's all we need to know. If there's anything else, I will find it amongst these papers. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jill. After six hours, it's all good. There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of things going on here. The main thing is Pam Holt, let's move on to her. No, 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 no. We're not moving on to her yet. No, we are gonna move on to her. After Pam's interview, I'm going to announce how much we've raised, okay? After her interview, stick around. I will announce how much we have raised. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna head over here and we're gonna bring Pam into the conversation. Here we go. Hey Pam, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jeff. So people have been watching now all day learning about the impact Safe and Sober is having. And uh, obviously it's a fundraiser. And so we're asking people to support. Why should people support Safe and Sober? Well, first of all, we deliver important education. As you've, you've heard today from a lot of the teachers and people who are end users of our content, it's important and it makes a difference. It changes behaviors in America's youth. But secondly, we're growing. We're in over 600 schools. Last year, 195,000 students received our content. And we immediately went virtual overnight when COVID started in March and schools you know, said, hey, you have to learn from home, it's virtual. So the need is greater. Our budget is $500,000, half a million dollars. It cost us about $1,000 to deliver our content per school. As we have a period of rapid growth, we need supporters to support us financially so we can continue to increase the number of schools that receive our information and content. Yeah, it, it, one of the things I've noticed in, in talking with the folks the, with the schools is how meaningful it is that it's free. And so it's free to the schools, but there's, a, there's an expense to get to creating it and getting it out to them. And it only comes through donations, I suppose, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, we do have uh, grants. We have a few corporate sponsors, and those are great 
meaningful partnerships and we would not be in business today without them. Um, however, as we grow, when we flipped the switch and said, we're now a national nonprofit, we wanna make our content available to anyone in the United States. We had nine states grab our content and start using it in their schools. We wanna be able to continue to grow at that rate and really make an impact for our youth when it comes to their mental health, drug and substance use and alcohol use. We wanna create this whole health, this emotional health, this mental health, rather than just talk about safe choices. We want relevant content. So it is expensive. We use cutting edge video technology. We have research that we do before we create the content. We have teachers who build curriculum for us. So it does cost a lot of money to deliver that in product. But what's important for us and what's core to our, our mission is that we're able to provide that to the schools for free. Otherwise, it's not gonna get used. And we're not in this to make money, we're a nonprofit. And we rely on the sole support and donations of, of people out there that are watching like you who support our program because you know we make a difference. Yeah, and I've been involved in uh, with Save It Sober in various ways uh, through the last few years and, and the growth in the last few years is really incredible. 600 schools across the country. Uh, what do you see as the vision? Is it, is it more growth, more relevancy? How do you see it growing? Yeah, we're growing um, deep and wide. Uh, we are targeting to have safe and sober in every school across the country. Um, there are 50 states. So we want to be able to deliver our content in all 50 states. Um, we know we started in Missouri. This will always be home. Um, but we have schools in Alaska who are using our program last year and this year. Um, so, you know, it's far away as Alaska all the way to Maine. We want schools to use the program. But also in content. Uh, we have content around vaping, nicotine use, drugs, pills, alcohol, and then all of those behaviors that come with it. So drunk driving or maybe risky sexual behavior. Right now, our target is mental health and positive mental health. And it's okay to talk about mental health. And here's how you talk about it. We're targeting parents. So we really see a need. Um, to expand in depth and breadth all of our content and programs to deliver what we call whole health to really get to the root cause of the issues that youth face today. Yeah, and it seems like it's uh, both the scope has gotten to a holistic approach to the student, but then also there's the student and you're, like you said, stuff for the teachers, for the parents. So it's, right. it's really looking at it from every angle. And I imagine doing it from every angle, there's expenses involved with creating that content. Right. So one thing that happened, um, and the reason we were able to flip the switch and go um, national when COVID hit, is we had enough forethought and vision to plan to be able to deliver our content virtually. That was a goal of ours. And so we had built this technology infrastructure to be able to deliver that. So we were thinking, how do we roll this out in bite-sized pieces across the country and really go promote it? Um, the pandemic allowed us the opportunity to tell people it's here, go use it. But we quickly outgrew that technology platform. So already just you know, seven, eight months into the pandemic, we're hearing schools say, oh, I wish that technology platform could do this for me or do that for me. So what we wanna do is update our website, update that technology platform to really have that key infrastructure. So the infrastructure, the backbone, we are what people don't realize, already a lean organization. We're a two person staff and we're a national nonprofit. So we do run very lean and we pride ourselves in that, but then creating the content itself is all professionally produced, uh, writing scripts, getting actors, and making that seem relevant. So there is a lot of growth that needs to happen and has already happened. And it's because of donations. It's because people like you who are willing to open your wallet and say, hey, I can help you do this. I can help you create this thing. I can help you deliver this to one more school. And that's what we're looking for 
if people can give us a dollar, if they can give us $5, if they can give us $5,000, we would welcome it and are so appreciative because that's what it takes to deliver this program for free. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting, um, having been a part of things a bit, and then also hearing from the teachers and stuff and counselors is that uh, I think like those of us who, all of us who went through high school have this understanding of what programmatic type things can be. But I think that our ceiling, for our thought for what a ceiling is on that is so far below in terms of the quality of things and, by, and the quality of the storytelling of the videos, of the just the look of the programs and that sort of stuff really, really matters. So it, it's not like, it's not what we used to think of when we were in school. It's like, I don't know, here's a pamphlet. It's like, this is really <laughs> thought out. Yeah, so it's not um, the days uh, when you celebrated internally when the teacher rolled the VCR into the room and popped it in and you were like, oh, I don't have to think, I can sleep. Um, this is this is going to be horrible. So I'm going to do other things like my homework. That's not it. Um, we're engaging, and it takes money and expertise to create that engaging content. And you know, I I think of our logo. We just rolled out a new logo today. We heard from youth across America that the old logo with the primary colors was kind of outdated, and that's not the look we want because none of our content is outdated. We listened to them and we updated it immediately. And um, that's the kind of organization we are. We respond with relevance. And so creating that content, creating the programs, it has to remain professional. And we have new content every year. So if you think about the pillars we talked about, if you think about vaping, nicotine use, alcohol use, risky behaviors, mental health, all of the pillars that we currently cover we are creating new content. And so that content becomes very expensive to create. And we've done a lot of things to create efficiencies around it, but it still costs money. So we really need that support to be able to stay relevant. Um, we could go to an every other year production schedule, but who wants to watch the same movie twice? Nobody. And so, unless it's really great, right? And so we wanna deliver something that talks to you about what's current this year, right now in your life. And so that's what we aim to do at Safe and Sober. And that's why we need the financial support. Yeah, so we're all convinced to support. Now, what about schools? I imagine there are schools that, that might be watching this and saying, hey, this sounds great. I want in on this. Can people yes. still enroll? Absolutely, enrollment's still open. Go to safeandsober.org. All you have to do is click register. It's right there on the homepage. Sign up your school. You can download the content and immediately view it, share it with your students, show it in a classroom, send it to them via your virtual platform, however you want them to consume that content. There's curriculum material. Everything you need to use the program is right there on the website after you register. It's super easy. Well, there you go. We had a great day, Pam. I think, uh, I think uh, a lot of people have been touched by the by the message and what you guys started and continue to do and, and, and reach more people. So, so thanks for what you're doing for all of our communities and uh, particularly in terms of safe and sober. You're welcome, Jeff. Thank you for being a great host and thank you for your partnership. It's people like you that um, help us make it happen for the communities that we serve. So we're very thankful. Thank you all for your donations. We appreciate your support. There you have it, Pam Holt. Yeah, that's great to hear. They uh, you brighten up again. Um, it's really great to hear her thoughts on that. Uh, um, just to recap what we've learned today. What did we learn today? Safe and Sober takes a holistic approach to it. They aren't just saying, don't do this behavior. They're saying, why are you doing this behavior? Let's get down to the mental health. And there are a lot of people in teenagers' lives that care about them and need to have <clears throat> information to be able to communicate, teachers, parents. And, uh, and if you are gonna reach teenagers who get a lot of information, you gotta be relevant with it, it's gotta look good, and uh, it has to feel modern. New logo, new materials all the time, and that's what you're supporting. You're supporting kids in 600 schools around the country in 10 states, and it's a big deal. So, 
where have we gotten today? Where have we gotten in terms of the fundraising? This is a fundraiser. Where have we gotten now? That was the last interview. Let's find out. Did we get to our goal? Glockenspiel. <gasps> we did it! $30,125! And... $30,125. Wow. This was very good. You did great. We are proud of you. No, what a, what a significant deal that is for teenagers in 600 schools in 10 states. You guys have ensured that they will get met with the resources that they need because they're adults in the communities that care about them and care about their mental health. And there's a lot of great things going forward and you have helped to create that. We wanna thank all of our corporate sponsors. We wanna thank Cox Health. And we wanna thank our corporate sponsors. And then we also want to thank our virtual sponsors as well. That ah, goes right over it, how about that? And, uh, and thank you for what you have done. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell you, get out of here. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you, the auction goes until eight o'clock. There's so many good things on there and you can do it you can get some of those things and support safe and sober and we may end up with far more than thirty thousand one hundred twenty five dollars but man thirty thousand one hundred twenty five dollars is worth celebrating all right so uh let's do this i'm just gonna uh i'm gonna sign off i'm gonna play some music and add some of your comments but truly from uh from myself and from those at safe and sober Thank you so much for what you've done. You've made a huge difference. Let's play some music and look at some comments.